Well, yeah, these different forces, as we see in the hermetic worldview, they're associated with the planets and they work upon us unconsciously. So the planets are affecting us whether or not we're conscious of it, but if we're unconscious of it, which many people are, then we're being pulled in these continuous states of attraction and repulsion. And they are driving us um, and basically determining our fate. And the more conscious that we can become of these influences and sort of form a relationship to these archetypal energies that the planets represent, the more agency and control we have over our own destiny and the more creatively we can engage with reality and with our life. Yes, because it does have an actual effect on us and our own little personal complex mm -hmm. that we carry around. The whole um, the axiom as above, so below is really quite literal to what you're speaking of. Exactly. So yeah. if we were able to, rather than look and look at the model in your you know seventh grade astronomy class of balls and sticks mm -hmm. and saw each one of these planets as a massive archetypal being that each represents an opportunity for growth, learning, and experience mm -hmm. in our solar system mm -hmm. and affects us directly on Earth like benevolent teachers, even Saturn, even Pluto, mm -hmm. as benevolent teachers. And then I like to take it down to the personal. So you get a hit physic. I mean, you get a hit emotionally. Now your, your electrical and nervous system is all trashed. Now it's starting to rewire some kind of a memory an event in the subconscious, which mm -hmm. is going to come back and keep influencing you until it has been transformed, such as what you did. If you care to explain that a little bit more so people understand what happens after trauma, and you can turn to Jung if you want. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think often what happens is we have these traumatic events, and yes, we keep getting pulled back to them in different ways in order to heal them and integrate them. And another thing that happens is we reject the parts of ourselves that we don't want to see, that we don't want to look at. And then we end up projecting those outward into the world. And so we see the enemy everywhere outside of us. And we encounter all these problems in our relationships and in our work life and, um, you know, these negative expressions of things that are actually within us that we've completely rejected. And until we're able to reclaim those shadow aspects, and recognize them as parts of ourselves, we're gonna to continue to do that and they'll just keep popping up in new forms. And so that's one way. And that I think that right now, whichever of the planetary um, beings, archetypes are influencing us the most, I think we have some good Saturn happening right now, a fair amount of that mm -hmm. affecting people. And maybe you can explain that a little bit. Um, we really are going to find ourselves in this kind of angst for the time being, it's it's that's what the time is calling for is to, like you said, look at the uncomfortable stuff in us and around us. Mm -hmm. And I think just to mirror what you said, so if we're seeing a lot of enemies, if the world mm -hmm. has become our enemy and that person who believes that is our enemy, mm -hmm. um, that's something that we re need to go inside for. Yeah, and also just to see where we're getting stuck mm -hmm. in certain mental loops because you know, our thoughts do influence reality. They do influence the experiences that we have. And so if we're continually um, having a certain conversation in our head, and, you know, oftentimes it'll be a, ne a negative conversation um, or a certain thought loop that we're stuck in, those things are more likely to come into being because we're putting more energy into them Absolutely. and spending more time focusing on them. Um, but we can also look to these archetypal planetary energies. And so say we're stuck on some sort of um, scarcity kind of mentality. Which people are right now. A lot yeah. of people are. Yeah. And I myself have gone through this many times. Mm -hmm. And it's for me, it's something that I still work through. You mm -hmm. know, This isn't an easy thing to do, but we can slowly begin to purify in an alchemical sense the contents of our own inner world and the contents of our mind. So this is both emotional and mental and sort of these cyclical processes. If we think of air and water within a vessel, you know, and uh, a distillation taking place, for instance, where the water is heating up and the vapors are rising and then they're condensing and cooling and you get the, uh, the essence being extracted from that process. Mm -hmm. So we can do that within ourselves, within the vessel of our body, 
where we continually clarify and refine the contents of our inner world. And this is a process. It takes a lot of time. It does take time. And, I, you know, I'm all for, for doing what you can by way of getting to the grounded kind of 3D level of things and looking at it from that possibility mm -hmm. to say, okay, if all else fails, what's left? And then from the what's left yeah. place, start rebuilding and building from there. And that there's, I've always found a kind of freeing, that uh, a freedom that occurs in taking into consider worst, worst case scenarios, for example, mm -hmm. con considering them. Yeah. And, and then, then the scarcity subject changes, it becomes altered. Mm -hmm. It might be that one's vision of what they thought their life was going to look like may not look like that in the moment. That's ego for the most part. Mm -hmm. If we let go of that and say, how can I be safe and happy and productive and mm -hmm. let go of the egoic vision of it, you'll find there's a well of creativity of how that can happen. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so then the scarcity starts backing off and once that backs off and the fear backs off, all the creativity pops in and mm -hmm. you end up with, you know, a beautiful work like this, for example. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>